I want to start by uh, recognizing and congratulating Coach Flo with men's and women's track uh, the championship and the runner-up. It's awesome. In my short time here at Texas, I've spent a little bit of time with Coach, not as much as I'd like but um, to this point, but I know he does an outstanding job. I want to congratulate those athletes. Um, it's special. Our guys were jacked about it, and uh, we were following the championship, so that was cool. Also, uh, Vic and the women's basketball team, a, a special run and championship. I've really enjoyed my relationship with Coach uh, so far. We spent some time together here at the facility. He's kind of a late night guy, like myself sometimes. So we've uh, it's just been fun watching that team develop. You know, in my opinion, I think they're a contender for the national championship. And I want to, uh, you know, suggest or uh, recommend or encourage Texas fans, uh, anybody that's not going to be able to make it to Milwaukee this weekend to support the women's team. As you guys know, they've got the first game here in Austin, potentially the second game. And, um, be awesome. Still playing here in the Irwin Center. So congratulations to Coach and the players and the staff. It's been um, great developing a relationship with them. They've been really supportive of us, and um, I hope that we've done the same for them. Uh, proud of our guys. Uh, you know, this never gets old, guys. You make the NCAA tournament, you never take it for granted. There's a lot of really good teams and really good players and coaches around the country today that um, you know, have some regret or disappointment, and uh, we're not one of those teams. Um, you know, we've got a, a chance to compete for the national championship, and um, I'm really proud of these guys. Uh, I know there was a narrative on this team early because of a lot of the individual pieces we had and the portal and kind of the newness to that, but internally, I just told these guys to run their own race, and uh, that's, that's what they've done. And so I think we've got a chance to be a real factor in this year's tournament, uh, but I'm really proud of our players. Uh, you never take this for granted, getting a chance to play in the NCAA tournament. Um, so to me, that's the narrative. Did a lot of great things too uh, with the attendance uh, this year and just encouraged Texas fans to come to Milwaukee. Uh, you know, come, come watch us play in the NCAA tournament. Anybody that's been there before knows what a magical weekend it is, not only for our team, but the other games and anybody that hadn't been to the NCAA tournament, just encourage them to come. Uh, tickets are accessible. This isn't like the Super Bowl or these first couple of rounds. You can get in the game. You got to hustle a little bit. Um, but I just uh, want to encourage the fans to come out or again come watch Coach's team here in Austin if you can't make it to Milwaukee. Um, but I'm proud of our guys. I'm proud of our program. We turned the corner in a lot of ways. Had a, an all-time high student attendance this year. I think it was fourth uh, largest attendance in the history of Texas basketball. You think about still some of the lingering effects of COVID and some of the economic stuff going on. I think to, to do that this year speaks a lot for our fan base. So we're super appreciative of what, um, you know, we started to build this first year. Um, we're looking forward to competing in the national tournament. Um, you guys know me, my narrative has been the same since day one. The whole deal is to try to play your best when it matters most. Um, you know, we got a nice seed. Uh, told the guys all year long, you work hard to kind of get in that front door coming in. I, not sure if we're in that front door, but I think we're in the front part of the house. And so we can we can get in there and turn this into a front door pretty quick. Um, our first opponent, obviously, I'm sure you guys have worked on this a little bit too, arguably kind of the hottest team in college basketball right now. Coach Young and those guys have won 13 out of their last 15 games. They went to the ACC tournament really with the fate of having to win it to get in, and that's exactly what they did. Uh, they're playing great basketball. They've got really good players. Um, they've got a unique style of play. We've played against coaches' teams in the past when he's at Wofford. Uh, our, my respect level is off the charts. Uh, we're friends. I uh, don't like playing friends in the tournament, but if you're, if you're doing that, at least you're in the tournament. You know, So, uh, so we, we'll have to play great. We'll have to play probably our best game of the year to advance, uh, but that's no different than most teams in the tournament. There's only a few that can kind of slide by with a – with a B zone game. Uh, we'll have to play our A zone game. We'll have to play a great first round, and that's what we intend to do. Yeah, I think so. Uh, not only haven't had success, haven't had experience. You know, we got multiple guys on our team that haven't played in the NCAA tournament. Uh, we do have some experience. Of course, the four guys that, that played here last year played in the first round of the tournament. Um, Avery Benson's played on Monday night. He's played in the Elite Eight. Christian Bishop has played in the Sweet 16. And all of our coaches have had runs in our own right. So there's some experience in the program, but there's also some inexperience with key spots playing in the tournament. 
you know, what that means, I don't know. It can go both ways. Maybe that's the hunger these guys need that they've been waiting to play on this stage or, um, you know, maybe it could be an advantage for Virginia Tech because they, uh, most of their guys played on that team last year that lost to Florida in the open round. So, you know, we'll see. I know this, uh, you know, we try to prepare our guys. We talk a lot about the NCAA tournament. Uh, we try to get them to feel what it's going to be like. Um, I know this year watching selection show Sunday, uh, yesterday, you know, it looked like our non-conference schedule. You know, we played Gonzaga, Seton Hall, Tennessee. I think we ended up playing eight teams uh, that are in the NCAA tournament. So um, I thought Rodney Terry did a great job with this year's schedule. It's had some challenges getting the job in April, but I think for the most part, we got some things done. Uh, our schedule will look a little bit different in the future, but I think this year I give RT a lot of credit for doing the best we could to put together a tournament that prepare us for the NCAA tournament. Um, but yeah, our, our our lack of experience playing in the tournament, I don't know. I mean, could that be a positive? These guys are, this is what they've been waiting for their whole careers. Um, or could that be a little bit of a disadvantage if guys don't go about it the right way? You know, we've got to address that. Well, I saw you over at Shoal Creek yesterday, 5.30. So that wasn't the last time I saw you. Um, Shoal Creek's a great spot, isn't it? Yeah, good. Recommend the catfish over there, uh, tartar sauce. Um, also, they have boudin. Everybody know what boudin is? Yep. Uh, I thought that was a Louisiana deal. Yeah, but we, that's what we eat. In Texas? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Boudin? I was down in Port Arthur for a little while. And Got introduced to Boudin. Um, also at Shoal Creek, the, the the pot pie. Got a crawfish pot pie over there. It's kind of a sneaky menu item that you got to kind of pay attention to to see it on there. Um, no, we had a great selection show Sunday yesterday. I appreciate everybody coming out to that that did. Many of you guys were out there. Um, toughness, no doubt. I, um, I love these guys. Um, I've really enjoyed coaching these guys. I hope we get to coach them for three more weekends. And, um, you know, I haven't questioned a lot about these guys, but I, I think, uh, you know, the verdict's still out on the toughness deal. I tell the guys all the time, it's not critical. It's just the truth. You know, I want to see it when the lights are on. And um, I believe in these guys. I think they got it in them. Uh, but toughness is a choice. You know, there's a lot of tough people that, uh, that choose to be tough every day. So I don't think it's a, are we capable of bringing that kind of toughness? I think, you know, are, are we willing to do it uh, is, is more my opinion. Yeah, something as coaches we talk about a lot. Um, you know, my deal is this: we're at Texas. Uh, we got to have guys that are are pros, dreaming of playing in the NBA. You know, if I can make you tight, you're in the wrong locker room. Um, now, with that being said, sometimes you get some younger guys or some guys in different settings. I think there's a fine line between confidence, but also um, reality. Um, and so we we talk about that. I know this year's team; it's a veteran group. Um, Devin's the only young guy kind of in the rotation, and he's kind of a a special young guy. He's a tough, tough kid. Um, so, you know, my deal is I don't sit around thinking much about um, how to reach guys or, or mind games and all that. And I'm, I'm a truth teller. And so, you know, um, that's just kind of our coaching style. Works great for guys that, um, you know, for guys that want to be pros, for guys that are pros. You know, I think our, our approach is, um, is, is the way to go. Um, we start getting into guys going the other way. You know, we probably, Got, got the wrong guys there if we're worrying about that stuff. Yeah, the all defensive deal, I, I just um, not taking any way, anything away from the five guys that got it. You know, it's uh it's a defensive league, especially this year. Uh, you know, on the all-conference teams, there's 15 slots. And on the defensive team, there's five. And so you know, I can't speak for the other coaches. You know, I couldn't vote for Ramey. If I did, I'd have voted him one in that regard. Uh, but you can't vote for your own players. So it um, be a fair question for the other nine guys in the league. But 
Um, I view Courtney Ramey as one of the best defensive players in the league. And uh, I think it's not just my opinion. I think the, um, the, the body of work shows it too. Now, you know, the stat sheet though, yeah, I think guys kind of glanced at the defensive rebounds, the steals and the blocks, but that doesn't tell the whole story. I would tell you that he guarded the other team's best player consistently this year and had some great individual uh, performances. So, you know, I, I view Ramey like that. I know other people do too. Um, but everybody can't get those things. And it's certainly not Ramey over one of those other guys that got it because they're really deserving too. Um, I felt the same way about some other guys in the league as well. Um, but Ramey had a great year defensively, and I, I'm looking forward to him having a great tournament defensively too. His rebounds the other day in the TCU game kind of stuck out to everybody. I, I literally think he's a guy that can get eight or nine rebounds a game in his tournament, and we'll need that um, against Virginia Tech. What was the first part of that question? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, coaching changes with veteran players. I've told you this before. I, you know, I don't get the job sitting there, you know, stressed out. We got to get Courtney Ramey to stay. That, that ain't the deal. It's his decision. He's a grown man. I think what I, what I emphasize on is we have to do a great job explaining to him and showing to him what we're all about and what we think our vision could be for the program and him. You know, that's the thing. It's not about talking him into staying. It's about making sure that he gets the information. And so we had great dialogue that very first night. He was in the training room and on the training table in the practice gym at Cooley up here a couple hours after the press conference, and we had our first conversation. Um, but it's important for us because you know, I think he's one of the best players in college basketball. So our recruiting started right here internally. Um, and so simply stated, he's just a really good player. And um, but I think all the intangibles too. I think uh, Courtney um, has really embraced change about as, as much as I've ever seen a player do in one in one year. Um, and that doesn't mean we're doing things better than Shaka did. You know, you do things differently. And I think, I think uh, Ramey performed at a high level for Shaka, and he's performing at a high level for us. And I think ultimately that'll be one of his great characteristics and traits as a pro. Pros have to adjust. You know, you, you're playing for this month in this system. You get traded. You're playing for this month. You might change countries, leagues. And, you know, guys that can adjust um, really end up being pros. And I think Ramey's proven that above all this year. Uh, that, that he can adjust. John Eisenberg, John, when we talked to Courtney earlier, he talked about people doubting him this year because of what happened last year in the tournament and the way they played on the way they did the three. And a little earlier he said, you feel like you guys are going to be a factor in this. Why? I think we're going to be a factor in this because uh, we got good players and they're, they're playing for each other right now. we got a chemistry amongst those 11 guys. Um, we've got a rotation that's making a lot of sense right now. Um, and so I think we have an opportunity. I think the Big 12 has is, is, uh, is prepared us, battle tested us. Um, now we got to go out, we got to try to beat basically another Big 12 team. Uh, Virginia Tech's a team that would win multiple games in our league, could play with anybody in our league. Um, you know, but my confidence comes from our players. Uh, my confidence comes from, I think they understand the opportunity they have. Um, last night, guys were in the gym up until 11 o'clock midnight, back in here early this morning. So, um, you know, my, my confidence comes from our players. Yeah, a lot of prayer. Uh, no, a lot of work. You know, I, I told the guys too, like, uh, you know, if in, in the NCAA tournament, a lot of people, I think, uh, they allow a distraction to be to get off their rhythm. They enjoy the, the media, the social media, family members. It's fun, right? It's all the games on TV. Once it starts, uh, the playing games, NIT will start pretty quick. There's just all sorts of kind of natural built in distractions, is what I call them this year, where you get off your rhythm. You know, I know, like, uh, it was a big thing for us last year. You know, we got guys that make 300 shots a day, period. And when we got to the bubble, you know, like gym access, but well, we're not going to be able to do that. And, and we fought. We actually put a basket in our ballroom so guys could stay in rhythm, you know. And, uh, so I just encourage the guys to kind of continue doing what you've been doing. If you've been list lifting weights five days a week, don't stop now just because we have a game on Friday. And so I think routine is really important uh, to NCAA tournament. Process is important. And our guys are embracing that right now really well early on. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, multiple things. We study those. We study our good runs and we study our, our, um, our bad runs. And I think, you know, both sides of the ball have to help each other. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, you, you know, you talk about a defensive run. Man, they scored five or six straight times on you. What happened? Well, the offense wasn't helping the defense. Three of those were bad shots or turnovers. It goes the other way, too. 
now you're having a hard time, you know, getting the ball in the basket. Well, we hadn't got to stop. You know, basketball is kind of a flow similar to football where the defense has to help the offense, the offense has to help the defense. So that's that's the first thing is both sides of the ball have to kind of coincide, I think, in the NCAA tournament to play your best. Um, I think, too, it's that fine line of being aggressive, um, but also understanding paint touches, free throw attempts, um, you know, second touch for our best players. These things are important. Um, but there's also a fine line. You know, in the NCAA tournament, you come down the floor and you get a good, quick, open shot. If it's the right guy, you got to take that shot in March. And so I think it's just an overall balance, uh, but we're certainly trying to encourage our guys to play their best, kind of freest, aggressive form of offense in the, mar in the, in the March Madness. You know, some of our key players, I don't want to speak for them, but I'm, maybe they told you guys this, but I think, you know, there has to be a following act uh, in the NCAA tournament, too. You know, everybody wants to be a leader, but you got to have followers, too. The best leaders I've ever coached are also followers. That's how the whole deal kind of works. And um, we do have some experience in our team and our organization of, of, of understanding how this tournament kind of works. So I'm hopeful um, that we can just kind of set, set an objective and everybody kind of follow suit. Uh, we have a clear game plan. Uh, to try to play against Virginia Tech. A lot of it's already in this morning, and it'll be up to us to kind of uh, follow that, you know. And that's like I told the guys, you know, going in the Big 12 tournament, you know, if, if we all sit around on Thursday morning and we say, hey, guys, we're going to go to Papa Do's at 6 o'clock tonight, and uh, it's going to be the one up there on I-35. We're going we're gonna to be there at 6, and um, when we get there, we're going to meet at the hostess stand, and we're going to go eat. Okay, that's the plan. And we all got to do what we say we're going to do. We can't show up Papa Do's, three people be at the wrong location, two people decide not to come, and one person just no-shows. You can't do that. Like, we said we're going to go to Papa Do's at 6. Um, you know, we didn't say we're all going to be, uh, you know, we, all, we, we didn't say we're all going to clean our plates and, um, you know, eat perfectly, just like we never say we're going to make every shot and not make a mistake. But if we say we're going to go to Papa Do's at 6, we need to go to Papa Do's at 6. And so some of our... Uh, kind of inabilities this year to play our best. It's just simply like that. You know, we, guys, when we say we're going to block out, we probably need to block out. And so um, that's probably been one of the obstacles we've overcome this year with a veteran team. Kind of crazy that we're even talking about this, but that's kind of been one of our issues, not doing what we say we're going to do. And I think that culminated the other day to a point where it's kind of an eye-opening experience for some of the players. Um, we bounce back pretty quickly. It's all you can do. I told the guys the other day, this stings, it hurts. It'll feel a little bit better on Saturday, and by Sunday, it'll be, it'll be ready to roll. You know, selection show Sunday, you see that, you name up there, it's time to roll. But hopefully we can learn from some of our experiences this year. You know, we're going to have to guard the pick and roll better against Virginia Tech than we did Gonzaga. We're going to have to rebound against Virginia Tech better than we did Seton Hall. You know, we're going to have to guard the three-point line against – Virginia Tech better than we did Iowa State, so you learn some of those lessons along the way, and that ultimately is what March is about. You know, I think uh, off the court or off that box score, Timmy kind of uh, um, represents and defends our culture uh, as good as any player. Uh, Timmy, Timmy doesn't love basketball, guys. He's addicted to it. Uh, he's got no backup plan. He's going to be a pro. He's going to make a lot of money. He's going to set the rest of his life up through basketball. We don't sit around thinking about, hey, if this still doesn't work out, I'm going to go down and get into broadcasting. He, he doesn't think that way. And um, he doesn't just talk about it. He works it. Now, if you come in here late at night, he's going to be in here. If you come in here in the morning, he's going to be here, as are other players. Uh, we talked about Ramey today. I mean, all of our guys have done a great job with that. Uh, so it's not an either-or deal, but we're talking about Timmy. You asked about Timmy. I'm talking about Timmy. He, he loves this game. He works at it. He's a tough guy. Uh, he can take, he can take uh, information. You don't have to sugarcoat. You don't have to walk around on, you know, uh, careful with Timmy Allen. And, um, you know, Timmy, uh, he's special. And, um, you know, I, I look forward to him playing great on this stage. Um, but he's an important player for our team just for so many reasons. He kind of is what we are. There's a toughness about him. Uh, there's also a humility about him. And uh, I think that's, you know, you can be a tough guy, but also be a first class guy, too. And that's Timmy. You won't meet one person that will ever tell you something bad about Timmy Allen. I mean, he, he treats our student manager just like he treats our athletic director. You know, if that makes sense. He's got a humility about him that's uh, second to none. Have on people within his orbit. 
Yeah, it's the it's the two story. I, um, Andrew Jones. I mean, he's uh, he's the toughest guy I ever met. You know, I mean, he beat cancer. He's not supposed to be here. He uh, not only beat it, he's playing basketball. And not only he's playing, he's an all conference player. You know, all five of our starters got uh, uh, you know um, recognition this year in the Big Twelve. So, um, you know, it's just the two things. But you know, the story was real. It's, it's one of the deal that went down and you know got a couple pops of chemo and he's back. I mean, this was a guy that was down for the count and. Um, we all remember the picture of him shooting at MD Anderson and um, my communication with Shaka during that time. And, uh, you know, he's just, uh, he's a hero, he's a hero kind of guy. You know, I, I, I saw, I took him to, uh, to Dick Vitale's gala last spring or summer. And I mean, he brought the house down. Uh, Coach Vitale said it himself. It's one of the most impressive speeches he's ever heard. It's, uh, it's real, man. I mean, in that venue, he's a hero, he's a warrior. Um, but then also in the basketball, you know, that's kind of where my responsibility comes in to kind of tell that story. Take away that heroic story that he's got in his personal life. He's also, you know, one of the best players that ever played at Texas. Um, and I think I know it's important to him to play well in the postseason. And, um, you know, I look forward to him doing that on Friday. Um, you know, toughness too, Drew's a tough guy. I think he's gotta be more physical at times. A lot of times, you know, there's a difference. There's some tough people that aren't physical and we've tried to encourage uh, Jones to become a more physical player and he has uh, and I think the more physical he plays uh, the better our team plays. Brian, got time for a couple more. Uh, what did that show about A3? Uh, we talked to him. He talked about experience. He's, he was right there with you guys all the way. I wonder, has he delivered or brought the toughness or whatever it is you wanted out of him this season compared to guys he is on the ground? Yeah, absolutely. Avery Benson's not only delivered, he's done above and beyond uh, what we've asked him this year to help us come in and establish the culture and, um, you know, and to win. You know, we're back in the NCAA tournament. Guys, again, you don't take that for granted. Uh, you know, those preseason polls didn't mean anything. We had to do the work. We had to get back in this tournament. There's really good teams in the country, teams in our league that aren't in this tournament. So Avery was a big part of that. We've relied on him heavily, uh, both contributing in practice, games, scout team, uh, some of the mentorship behind the scenes. Um, I mean, I, I forever be grateful for uh, for Avery coming here um, with what appears to be his last year and, and, and playing here at Texas and, uh, you know, the master's degree and that whole deal. Um, uh, but, yeah, that that's the narrative uh, period. You ask his teammates, too. He's been nothing short of uh, everything we've asked of him. Avery Benson's he's delivered in his role here. Yeah, I understand the question because I get kind of reminded of that from time to time. But me personally, uh, it's not coach's speech. It's, it, it doesn't mean anything to me in that regard because I wasn't here the last 10 years. Um, you know, I've been here one year. We're in the NCAA tournament. Timmy Allen's been here one year. We're in the NCAA tournament. Um, but I understand the question. You know, things that are important to the fans and the fan base, they're important to us too. And, um, you know, Texas needs to be in the NCAA tournament every year. Texas needs to be competing for regular season championships. Texas needs to have seeds where we can play um, in front of our fans, uh, um, you know, on a regular basis in this tournament. You can't always quite get that done, but you work towards that. That's an important thing. And, um, you know, we need to win games in this tournament. And so um, I think the most important thing is, you know, can these guys make a run in March? Um, you know, we know we can play with anybody in the country. Uh, we played with one seeds, two seeds, three seeds, but, you know, the, the talk is over now. We've reached ourselves back to that survive and advance moment. I've tried to help these guys get into the mo that moment at other times this season, but now, you know, it's here. Um, you know, we're 80 minutes from the Sweet 16. The most important uh, game in any tournament is the first game. Um, and it's Virginia Tech, again, haven't been a lot of questions about those guys today, but you guys know they're, they're playing as well as any team in the country right now. So we'll have to play really well. Uh, I don't shy away from saying this. I, I don't think it puts any pressure on the guys. We'll have to play our best game of the season, in my opinion, on Friday to be successful in this game. Uh, but that's no different, really, than most years. Uh, I've never really gone into an NCAA tournament thinking we're not going to have to play our best game uh, tonight. I'm trying to think back in some of our first round games. I've, I've always felt that way. I, I think you got to play your best game in the first round of the tournament. Um, might be able to slide into an A-minus type game later on, but um, this first game, I mean, you got to bring it.